Amen. Amen. He always wins. He never loses. And it's comforting and it's reassuring to know that the God who is on our side, he, is, he always wins. So we thank God this morning for our praise and worship team for doing such a, an amazing job, for what, so, singing so beautiful unto the Lord, for ushering us into the presence of God. And we just want to thank God again this morning as we come. And again, before we get into the Word, let me just remind you, you can go ahead and make your pay your tithes and offering via our online application through, uh, uh, you can text uh, ANCOG to 77977. Again, uh, for those who uh, would like to give their offering and tithes electronically, that is text ANCOG to 77977. You can also give through the cash app, and that is uh, dollar sign ANC70. Okay, so go ahead and you could pay your uh, tithes and give an offering and so uh, allow God to bless you through the seed in which you will sow into this ministry. Again, we thank God for this day. We thank God it's truly a day that the Lord has made. And let me again remind you, as I've always done, that the God that we serve, He is a good God. God is a good God. He doesn't possess goodness. He is good. And so we just thank God for His goodness, for His mercy, for His grace, for all that God has given unto us. We truly appreciate the Lord this morning. And so let's get into the Word today. And so even at this time when we cannot come together collectively, when we cannot be in the same space, let us know that the Word of God is just as powerful. It is just as relevant as if we were together in the same place. It is not where you are. It is the power of God's Word. And so as we get into the Word today, allow the Word of God to speak to your heart. Allow God in His Word to, to minister to you. And through the Word of God, it is my prayer that you're going to be strengthened by the Word of God today. Uh, earlier we read from uh, John's, uh, uh, his third, uh, the third epistle of John, uh, verses 1 through 3. And in both verse 1 and 2, John uses the term that we are called. In verse 1 he says, uh, What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can be called the sons of God. And again in verse 2 he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it's interesting that John uses this phrase, sons of God. Because when we look at Scripture, it is only two individuals, individually, that God has, this, the Bible refers to as the Son of God. That is Jesus Christ Himself and also Adam. And so we do not see that term in the Old Testament in relating to one individual. I know it speaks of the angels as the sons of God, for example, in the book of Job, where the sons of God came before the Lord. But as far as an individual, it is only uh, uh, Adam and Jesus in the New Testament that is referred to as the Son of God. But then we begin to see that, especially in the writings of Paul, we as the church, we are also termed the sons of God. And so we look at that and we see, and for me anyway, it's a great promotion. We who were once, uh, let's, let's, let, me, let me personalize it. Me who was once alienated from God, who was once a stranger, who were once outside of the commonwealth of Israel. Now, not only I am, am I no longer a stranger, no longer am I an, an alien, no longer am I a foreigner, but God has declared me and you that we are now sons and daughters of God. 
And even as we look at not just this scripture, but a passage from, let me call your attention to the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 7 and verses 1 through 3. And I'll be reading from the New International Version of the scripture. Uh, Moses, uh, who wrote this book, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, this is what he says in the of chapters in chapter 7 of Deuteronomy verses 1 through 3 he says when the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drive out drives out before you many nations and God lists seven nations here the Hittites the Gergerites the Amorites the Canaanites the Perizzites the Hivites and the Jebusites seven nation that God says is larger and stronger than you. Uh, he continues, And when the Lord your God has delivered you, sorry, has delivered them over to you, and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. He says, Make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. And he continues to the end of Verse 3, do not intermarry with them, do not give your daughters uh, or your sons to them, or take their daughters for your sons. And I want to just focus somewhat today on this passage of Scripture. And the thought I would like to leave with you, it is this, keep on fighting, there is victory ahead. Keep on fighting, there is victory ahead. And if you can just turn to the person, if you are with others now as you're listening to this, turn to the person next to you at home or wherever you may be and just say to them, keep on fighting because there is victory ahead. One of the things God has promised us as children, as Christians, is that we are victorious. In Christ Jesus God has given unto us victory. There's a song that says, Victory in Jesus. And so it is not just the lyrics of a song that we sing because we know it. Let us understand it is a truth that has been given to us that as Christians, as those who are born again, those who are in Christ, that indeed we have victory in Christ. In Jesus, we have victory. Now, Joshua, who, after the death of Moses, Joshua became leader of Egypt, of Israel. And the book of Deuteronomy, which means second law, was given, and that's the reason why you find a lot of what is said in the book of Deuteronomy was previously said in the book of Leviticus. And so, because it was written specifically for those who had not been in Egypt, who had, who had no experience of the Red Sea, and who never even in themselves spent the entire 40 years in the wilderness. So these are individuals who are not familiar with what God had done in Egypt and how he had brought them out with a mighty hand. And so this new generation of Israel, they were entering the land of Canaan, understand they have not even they haven't gone through a lot of tests they haven't gone through as i said the red sea and the wilderness and being uh, pursued by pharaoh and his army armies they had not experienced that and so that was a brand new generation and so god brought them into the land you know, one of the things to understand, you would always be more careful with things that you have acquired yourself, you have bought yourself, you had worked for. Typically, if someone gives you something of value that you did not have to labor for, then we tend to look at it and approach it differently than if we had to spend our own money or had to work weeks and months in order to acquire it. So these people, the children of Israel, entering into the land. They had not really fought for the land. And note what God says to Moses. When the Lord your God 
I'm uh, sorry, through Joshua, when the Lord your God brings you into the land, you are entering to possess and drive out before you many nations. And here God lists seven nations. And each of these nations represented something. And in this message, we're not going to get into the individual nation and what it signified to the, to the Israelites. And maybe in a future Bible study, we can talk about that. But God says, there are these nations that are, I'm giving you their land to possess. And he says, when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you, and note what he says, you have defeated them. But again, let us take note of this. But it didn't, God says, I'm going to bring you into a land to possess it. And he says, I'm going to drive out the nation before you. So I'm thinking then that if God is driving them out, then I don't need to do anything. I just have to just walk in and just take it. Because after all, God is doing all the work. But then God says to them, when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you and you have defeated them. See, one thing I realize is that even as Christians, we will at times have to fight our, our adversary. In other words, there are enemies that you and I, even though we are in Christ, even though we are in the land, even though we take possession of the land, there are times that there are enemies that we still have to fight. I know if for every one of us, even though we are Christians, we still struggle with certain things. Everything isn't just handed to us. There are things that we have to fight for. It doesn't mean God has not given it to us, but oftentimes we, it becomes a struggle, it becomes a fight, it becomes a pressing in in order to get it and the lord says to them even though you have given you them that you need to defeat them you must you must destroy them but god i i thought you gave them to you gave us the land but the bible says god basically left in the very land in the very promise in the very blessing, God left something there that would try them and test them. And as I mentioned a moment ago, that in Jesus, who is called the Son of God, Adam, who is called the Son of God, we who are referred to as sons of God, we know every person God calls a son goes through a test, goes through difficulties will be confronted with situations will have enemies at times the fact that i am in christ the fact that i am a son of god the fact that i am born again doesn't mean life becomes so easy for me and i know we're living in a time where for us is not about the struggle it's about the blessing it's about the blessing. And even when struggle comes, unfortunately, some, some, many of us fall by the wayside because we do not grasp the idea that if I'm in Christ, life would become difficult at times. Because I'm in Christ, everything then ought to be easy. Everything ought to be handed to me. Everything ought to just be given to me as I desire it. God says, look, I'm taking you into the land. I'm giving you the, the land of Canaan. And in that land, there were nations. And God is saying to them, when I have delivered them over to you, you have to defeat them. You must destroy them totally. Again, my thought, keep on fighting. There is victory ahead. Keep on fighting. There is victory ahead. And so when we look, and as I mentioned, we could examine the type of enemies that were in the promised land. 
And understand in ancient times, normally your name is not just when a name is given to an individual and even to a nation. It was not just, well, a random name chosen. There was something unique about that name. The, the name tells you something about the individual that has the name. And so each of these nations, they contained, there was a characteristic about them. There was something about them that was going to be challenging to Israel. They were going to be challenging to God's people. Because I know all of us, we know the fact that I'm born again, the fact that I'm in Christ. We all have struggles. We all have temptations. We all endure, uh, we, we, we have to work through strongholds at times. Everything is not just nice and easy. The devil does not just move out of the way simply because we ask him to. Situation doesn't immediately turn around simply because we desire it. There are times when we have to fight. And the fact that, again, let me say, the fact that I have to struggle and I have to fight doesn't mean God didn't give it to me. Does not mean it's not mine. Because many things that God has given to us in order to take possession of it, it will cost us something. We have to put up a fight. We have to persevere. We have to push through. The enemy is not just going to put up his hand and walk away simply because God has given us something. And see, the question is then, why is it then that the fact that I'm born again, why is it that the fact that I have Christ in me why is there certain struggles still in me? Why is there, uh, even I would go as far as to say sinful desires in me? Why is that? And when we look into the book of Judges, chapter 3, verse 1, God says, these are the nations the Lord left to test all of the Israelites who had not experienced any wars. Because most of these individuals now entering the land were never slaves. If we could recall, by reason of Israel's uh, disobedience, many of them who left Egypt never made it into the promised land. During that 40 years, many of them died. It was only the young ones and those who were born in the wilderness that made it into the promised land. But God said he left. These are the nations the Lord left to test all those Israelites who had not experienced any wars. They were left to test the Israelites to see, the, to see whether they would obey the Lord's command, which he had given. When Adam sinned, the fact that he ate the fruit was in direct violation to what God had said. It was Adam's obedience that was tested. When every test that Jesus had to endure, it was a test of his obedience to the Father. And dare I say it tonight, today, every test you and I will go through is a direct, con is in conflict with what God says. Every test is a test of my obedience to God. And so then, if the Lord saved me, if the Lord saved you, but yet we are faced with test, remember it is, uh, I believe the scripture says that, uh, I think he was talking of Joseph, it, well, he was, it is the word of God that tested him. It is, the, it is the word of God. And if he had broken any of what God has said, 
Or if he had walked in disobedience to God, it would be a direct violation of something God has said. And understand that's really where the enemy will attack us. That's the reason why. When Jesus was faced with, 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 with the adversary in the wilderness, with the devil in the wilderness, his response to everything that the devil threw at him, his response was, it is written. It is written. He countered what the devil was seeking to do by reminding the devil what the word of God says. And trust me, the devil knows what the word of God says. And that's the reason why the way we overcome, the Bible said it is by our testament, it is by our words we overcome. When the enemy brings something to you, always remind him of what God says. Always let the devil know this is what is written. This is what God says. And I am committed to standing and to doing what God says. These nations were left in the land as a test to see if Israel would obey God's command. To see if they would adhere to what God had said through Moses. The verse says, which he had given their ancestors through Moses. But you see, again, what God was also doing through these nations. He was teaching Israel, and dare I say us also, how to attack their enemies. Let me say this, saints. Your greatest weapon against when the enemy comes against you, whatever the enemy is, whether it's the world, the flesh, or the devil, your greatest weapon is not prayer. But the greatest weapon that you have in your arsenal against the adversary is your obedience to God. It is our insistence on living and walking in obedience that frustrates the devil. That's why the devil doesn't mind if you pray. The devil, the devil doesn't mind if you go to church. As a matter of fact, the devil doesn't mind if you read the scriptures. You can read it from morning till evening. You can pray from sun up to sundown. You could be in church seven days a week. But if you are not walking in obedience to God, the devil would let you pray. He would let you go to church. He would let you read. It is your obedience to God's word that challenges the devil, that frustrates the enemy. That's why Adam fell. Not because he didn't pray, not because, well, there was no scripture back then, but it's because he disobeyed God. And that's why when the enemy, when the devil came to Jesus, he sought to get him to disobey God. And whenever the devil comes against us, his aim is to get you and I to disobey God. But I encourage you today to keep on fighting. Because there is victory ahead. See, that's the reason why for us in our dispensation, in our time, God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. And the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit is not to get you to speak in tongues. Not even to give you an anointing per se. But rather to help you and I to walk in obedience. He's going to teach us. He's going to reveal to us. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to open up things to us. Because his aim is to help us to walk in obedience to God's word. To help us to do that. God's command. He says to Israel, to utterly, totally, completely destroy the enemy. Make no treaty with them. Show them no mercy. 
We don't have to be merciful to the flesh. I know the flesh satisfies us in certain ways, but we are told we ought not to be merciful to the enemy. We ought to totally and completely destroy him. That's why Paul says, you see this flesh? I, I, I crucify it daily. In Christ, he says, the old man with his deeds passed away. Because God, there is no, when it comes, when it comes to the ad adversary, when it comes to our enemies, saints, there, is, there ought to be no compromise. Our only, our only response ought to be to attack and to kill the enemy. So when the devil brings up certain desires in us, it's not to uh, a compromise, it's not to accept it, but rather to resist it, resist him. Doesn't it, the, the scripture tells us, resist the devil and he's going to flee. He's going to flee. He's going to flee. That again is our strongest weapon, is to walk in obedience to God. In other words, doing what God says rather than what the adversary says. Doing what God commands us in his word rather than doing what the enemy says. And so James tells us to resist. Or he said, notice what he said, submit yourselves to God. How do I submit myself to God? By walking in obedience to God. But note what he goes on to say. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. It is not just resist. He first said submit. Accept what God has said. Do what God has said. Walk in God's word. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God by walking in obedience to God. You can resist the devil, or I should say, we can resist the devil all we want. But if we have not submitted to God, Nothing changes. The devil would only flee when in addition to resisting him, we submit to God. So that again, as I mentioned a moment ago, is our greatest and our strongest weapon against the adversary. It is our unconditional submission. It is our unconditional surrender to God. And when we see it, we realize that then the fight then is not as, 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 as hard as we seem to make it. We, the, 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 the struggle, the battle doesn't seem as if then all God is asking us to do is to walk in obedience. And all the devil is attacking us is so that we won't walk in obedience. Peter says to us, as obedient children, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in your ignorance. But just as he who has called you is holy, he says we ought then to be holy. We have to be holy because we are born again, even as the scripture tells us, not by a corruptible seed, but by the living word of God. That word that we are called on to walk in obedience to. That word of God that as we Submit to it. See, that's, that's how the Word of God impacts me and you. It's not by simply us just reading it. It is not simply by us knowing how to recite it. How to memorize it. 
but rather how to submit to it, how to walk in it. That's when the power of God's word becomes manifested in us. That's when we see the benefits of the word of God. It is by submitting to it. I mean, Adam, Adam, Adam knew what God says. Adam knew what God says. God had told him. Adam knew it. But Adam's fall was not because he didn't know, it's because he didn't do. And so we are asked, let us not then be simply hearers of the word. But let us be doers of the word. Because that's where the difference is. That's what keeps the devil awake at night. Worried and concerned about you and I as a church. Not because we come and we get our praise on and we, we dance and we shout in the presence of God. All of that is good. Don't get me wrong. But the devil can preach better than a lot of us. The devil can sing better than a lot of us. The devil can jump and shout. The devil can even speak in tongues better than many, many of us. What the devil can't do, he can't walk in obedience to God's word. And so, as we live our lives daily, knowing that we are in Christ, knowing that I, I may have to struggle with certain things, Knowing that there is a, the, 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 there is a, the challenge of, of, of my flesh, and knowing that there is a, a world out there that is enticing, knowing that uh, uh, things doesn't always go my way, knowing that, uh, as we say, someone may rub you the wrong way, knowing all of that, we face storms, we struggle. We may face persecution at times. We may even experience suffering. Paul says to Timothy, those who would live godly will suffer. The writer of the book of Job says, man is born unto trouble. He says, affliction doesn't come out of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground. But man is born unto trouble. It is part of our experience. Whether Christian or non-Christian, life is a struggle. But God has given us as Christian the answer. And the answer is not just handed to us. Just like the land of Israel, of, of Canaan, yes, it was given to them, but God left enemies in the land. And as he said, and as I have read, he did it as a test to them. The nations were left, there, so Israel, who had not experienced wars, they were left to test them to see whether they were walking in obedience. The test that you're an obedient person, or you're walking in obedience, is not that God gives you everything you want when you want it. There are times God is going to withhold it. There is times God's going to delay it. Can we continue to be faithful when there is a delay? Can we continue to be the sons of God when the situation doesn't work out the way we wanted it to work out? Can we continue being faithful when the situation would be a lot easier if I am unfaithful. And so we may ask the question then, God, why didn't you give me what I desired? And I don't know about you, but everybody wants what we consider a perfect spouse. But sometimes God gives us a spouse that has flaws. We may want a perfect job. We may want a perfect, we may want perfect children. But these things, although God gives it to us, oftentimes these things will try us. They will test us. 
and understand God uh, even in the things that he gives to us. He will permit it to test us, not to make our lives miserable, not to punish us, but to see whether we will walk in obedience to God. So again, I encourage you to keep fighting. Keep walking in obedience. Keep adhering to the word of God. Because the Bible reminds us that you will certainly reap if you faint not. He left something there to challenge you. I made the statement in the past, and as time went on, I am more and more convinced that there is an element of truth in that. that it is possible that God did not make it possible for us to get married and have kids so that we would just be happy, but rather is so that we would be obedient and we would be holy and not just happy. Every blessing, and that's what I've learned, every blessing of God comes with challenges. And the reason for that is God wants to see, are we going to be faithful to him? Are we going to continue to walk in obedience to him? Because that is the ultimate test of you and I being in God, is are we obedient? That's why even in the writings of the Old Testament, we are reminded that to obey is better than sacrifice. God has called us to walk in obedience. Whether the blessing is at hand or whether it is distant, whether we have what we desire or not, whether it is what we want or not, God has called us to be obedient. He's called us to continue the fight. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've run the race. The reason why Paul could not receive that which is laid up for him is because in the midst of his difficulties, in the midst of his struggle, when he was shipwrecked, when he was hungry, when he was beaten, when he was put in prison, when he was in danger, Paul continued to be obedient. And so... He finished his course. And let us understand, saints, that we will get our reward. We will get what God has laid up for us. Not just if we are patient, but also if we continue to walk in obedience. Keep on fighting. There is victory ahead. The Lord bless you. We thank you for the time you have spent listening and being part of our worship. Right there where you are, just bow your heads. Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done and continues to do, even through this time of testing for the body of Christ even at this time when there is so much there is so much uncertainty there are so many questions that we do not have the answer for but God you have called us to walk in obedience to your word and that obedience is not conditional it is not 
to be obedient when things are easy. But even in the difficulties, even in the hardship, even in the storms of life and the struggles that we will go through, God, you have called us to be obedient. Let us today, God, let us be obedient children. Not because it is easy. Let us be obedient to your word. Let us be obedient to the call. Let us be obedient, God, to the mission that you have given unto us. And even at this time where we cannot come together, God, let us continue to be obedient to you. We know, God, that you said the race is not for the swift and the battle is not for the strong. But we ask you, God, give us that enduring spirit. Give us that fighting spirit. Give us that spirit that does not give up. Give us that spirit that doesn't lay down our weapons when the going gets hard. But we'll continue to fight. Because just as the battle and the fight is real, even so, our victory is assured. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for this time, Father, Lord God, of sharing your word. Cause that your peace will continue to rest on your people. Cause, Father, Lord God, that your word and the obedience us walking in obedience of your word will remove all fear we remove all panic and God while we wait for this storm to be over I pray God that we'll continue to focus on you have your way in Jesus